Nope. Tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sister Tamis has reading of the word and praise and worship. Be blessed. It is communion time, folks. Amen. It is communion time. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 32, it tells us, it explains the communion. Amen, folks. You know, there's a certain way that we need to take the communion. We need to examine ourselves. We need to know why we're taking the communion. You know, we don't just take communion to look good. <laughs> yeah, we don't take communion just to just to look good, to look holy. We don't take communion out of tradition. We don't take communion out of religion. We don't take communion because it's our, our culture. We take communion because we're coming together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We're remembering His body that was broken for us. We're remembering His blood that was shed for us. We're honoring His body. We're honoring His blood. Every time we take the communion, we are showing His debt to His return. This is the reason why we take the communion to come into remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. There is no other reason why we take communion except to remember our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen, folks? There's no other reason why. Is it okay to take communion during during fast? You know, that's the question that you got to deal with. You and God go before you and God, you know? For me, I don't see a reason. There's, there's, um, for there's, um, I don't see a reason why you can't, but that's just me. Better for you to pray to God about it and ask Him and let Him lead you. So be encouraged, folks. Yeah. The reason why we take communion is to remember our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. There's no other reason why we take it. This is dedicated to God, this is a holy meal dedicated to God. So let us lift up the bread that was given to us. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come together as a family in Christ and receive your Holy Communion. That as we do this, we do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, Lord. We do this, Father Lord, honoring his body that was broken for us, that every place that's broken in us can be made whole again. We honor his blood that was shedded for us, making the new covenant with you, Father Lord. We announce his death till his, till his return, Father Lord. And in doing so, we come before you, Father Lord, and we examine ourselves, asking you for forgiveness of every wrong thing that we have done against you knowingly and unknowingly, Father Lord. And because of your forgiveness for us, we can forgive those who come against us. So we lift up the bread to you, Lord, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And we partake in this, Father Lord, until the day of his return. Amen. Partake. Let's lift our cup up to the Lord. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we lift our cup up to you, Lord, we partake in the blood of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We partake in his blood that has washed away our sins clean from the past, present, and future. We partake of his blood, Father Lord, that has paid our ransom in full and bought our freedom back. We partake of his blood, Father Lord, that has made the new covenant with you, Lord, which was made better for us with better promises. And in doing so, Lord, we receive every finished work that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus has provided for us through the shedding of his blood on the cross for us. We do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus until the day of his return. Amen. Partake. Father Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, giving you glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. God is good. God is good. We serve Almighty God. All right, Faith Morning Ministry. Are you guys ready to get into the sharing of the word? So be encouraged before we get into the sharing of the word. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can make heaven your home by simply repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If there is anyone here who would like to receive salvation and make heaven your home, type in the comments I do. I would like to pray and make that good confession with you. 
as you acknowledge Jesus Christ here on earth, he's going to acknowledge you in heaven before his father. He's going to let his father know in the presence of the angels that you belong to him. You have this opportunity today. For those who would like to receive salvation, type in the comments. I do. I would like to pray and make that good confession with you folks. God is good. We serve Almighty God. All right, folks. All right, Fate Morning Ministry. Good morning. For all of you who is new here, welcome to Fate Morning Ministry. On behalf of myself, my beautiful wife, and all the moderators here, we are blessed to have you here with us. We're blessed to be in fellowship with you. God is good. So, let's get into the sharing of the word. This is part four. <laughs> Part four of dressing up for Christ. Amen. But before we get into the sharing of the word, we always got to take God with us. Amen. We always got to do everything with God. So let's lift up our fellowship. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that we can fellowship in your truth. That as we fellowship in your truth, Father Lord, our hearts will, will be prepared to receive your word correctly, Father Lord. Through your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your discernment, your clarity, your vision, your revelation, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your incorruptible seed will be planted. And we will reap the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest inside of us of your word, of your truth. Every assignment that Satan will bring against us, we break it now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this fellowship lord we thank you lord that as we fellowship together here you are in the midst of us we thank you for your holy spirit that will lead us into all truths concerning your word giving you glory and praises let your words flow through my mouth let your anointing be upon my tongue let your thoughts fill my mind and let your will fill my heart in jesus name amen god is good Whew, we serve almighty god Amen, brother. Amen, brother Jacob. Bless, bless, bless. God is good. So let's make some declarations and decrees. Amen, folks. Let's go ahead and make some declarations and decrees. Hey, brother, God loves you, brother. So the first one. I declare and decree the devil is a liar and I will not listen to him. I declare and decree the devil is a liar and I will not listen to him. I declare and decree I will submit to God and resist the devil and he flees. I declare and decree I will submit to God and resist the devil and he flees. <coughs> Excuse me. I declare and decree I will give no foothold to the devil. I declare and decree I will give no foothold to the devil. I declare and decree I will not let the I will not let Satan devour me. I declare and decree I will not let Satan devour me. I declare and decree I will not let Satan deceive me. I declare and decree I will not let Satan deceive me. I declare and decree I will not let Satan accuse me. I declare and decree I will not let Satan accuse me. I declare and decree I have all the authority over the devil. I declare and decree I have all the authority over the devil. I declare and decree I have the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare and decree I have the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare and decree I overcome the I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the words of my testimony. I declare and decree I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the words of my testimony. I declare and decree my faith is in the Son of God. 
I declare and decree my faith is in the Son of God. I declare and decree that Jesus is the Son of God and my Lord and Savior. I declare and decree that Jesus is the Son of God and my Lord and Savior. Now let's seal it. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, every declaration, every decree, every confession that I have spoke, I receive, I believe, I plead the blood of Jesus over it and declare that it works in my life, giving you all the glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. The devil is a liar. All right, folks. So we've been, we've been on, we've been on this, we've been on this sharing for the last three days, and this is day number four. God is good. Part four of dressing up for Christ. Amen. Dressing up for Christ. So as born again believers. When we made a decision to take hold of salvation that God gave us through His Son, Christ Jesus, we took hold of our new nature in Christ and clothed ourselves in Him, being led by the Holy Spirit. And someone got very upset when we decided to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And that someone is Satan. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4, it tells us this, among them, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. We know for a fact, and that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4. We know for a fact that we are of God, and the, the whole world, the whole world around us lies in the power of the evil one, Opposing God and his precepts. 1 John 5, 19. So we know this, folks. Satan, he is the God, small g, of this world. Whoever is in this world that is not of God is under his power. Amen, folks. It doesn't matter. You may not, you know, you might not know it. You may not feel like it. But you're under his power. If you don't belong to Christ, you're under his power. You're under Satan's influence. We used to be fully clothed in the world from head to toe, and we used to belong to Satan. Just speaking facts, folks. Now, the key word is we used to. We used to. Amen, folks? We used to belong to Satan. He had us in the, in the palms of his hand, lying, manipulating, and deceiving us, having us do his will. But because of the blood of Jesus... And the word of our testimony, we overcame Satan and became a new creation, set free from his grip. Amen, folks. We're just speaking Amen. facts now. Don't nobody get hurt. I'm not calling you. I'm not telling you that you belong. I'm saying that we used to. We used to. Amen, folks. So now that we became free from his grip, that doesn't mean he's done with us. He's going to do everything he can to try and get us to take our new clothes off and slow us down in our walk with Christ or being or bring us to a complete stop or worse have us turn our backs on Christ and conform back to our old nature and ways that we were that we were in in the world amen folks just because we came to Christ that doesn't mean Satan is done with us we were in his grips. He had us. We got all of his grips. So what is he going to do? He's going to try to get us back. I mean, he's not going to attack those that belong to him, right? He's not going to bother with anybody that belongs to him. He's going to bother with those who don't belong to him, especially <laughs> the ones that he had, each and every one of us. He had us. He had us. He had our legs. He had us in his trap. God broke the trap for us. He got us out of the trap. Amen. So what is he going to do? He's going to try and get us back. I mean, just because we receive salvation, that doesn't mean that he is done with us. He's going to try to either what? Slow our walk down with Christ. Make us be complacent or worse, try to make us turn back from Christ. Try to re try to make us reject Christ and conform back to our old ways. Hey, good morning, Brother Chris. Amen, folks. John chapter 8 verses 44 tells us this you are of you are of your father the devil and it is your will to practice the desires which are 
characteristic characteristic of your father he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he lies he speaks what is natural to him for he is a liar and the father of lies and half truths amen folks john 10 10 tells us this the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy i came to, to that they may have life and have it uh, in abundance to the full till it overflows amen so what does satan come to do kill steal destroy he's a liar from the from the beginning he's a murderer from the beginning amen folks what does he want to do he wants to take us out amen all satan wants to do is to kill steal and destroy our walk and relationship with god he wants to strip us down naked and bring us back to the place where we used to be this is why we fight the good fight of fate first timothy chapter 6 verses 12 amen what does he want to do he wants us to take off our new clothes remember we came to christ we got a new nature and, and we're well, along with this nature what did we receive new clothes amen folks and what does satan want to do he wants to he wants to strip us down he wants to strip us down from, from our new clothes he wants to take that new nature that's in us out of us and put us back where we used to be this is why we fight the good fight of fate as we are fighting this good fight we are fighting not to obtain victory but to hold on to the victory jesus gave us we are holding on to our new nature we are holding on to our new clothes we are holding on to our new life in christ amen folks we're not we're not fighting to obtain the victory jesus gave us the victory when we fight the good fight of faith we're fighting to hold on to the victory we're fighting to hold on to our faith what does satan come to do kill steal and destroy so we're fighting to keep satan from stealing our faith amen we're fighting to keep satan from destroying our relationship with christ amen folks we're not trying to get victory we're holding on to the victory that christ gave us amen that's why it's called a good fight of faith second corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 tells us this this means that anyone who belongs to christ has become a new person the old life is gone a new life has begun this is what we're fighting the good fight of faith for we're holding on to our new life our new life has begun in christ jesus amen as we as born again believers have been clothed in truth righteousness peace faith and salvation let me read that one more time we as born again believers have been clothed in truth righteousness peace faith and salvation now what does now what two things does this represent for us what two things does this represent for us faith morning ministry Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. What does this represent? What two things does this represent for us, Faith Morning Ministry? All right, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know. Amen, brother. Number one. The first thing it represents is this, the fruit of the Spirit, which is Jesus, who is our new nature. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Amen, folks. So the first thing it represents is the fruit of the Spirit, which is Jesus, who is our new nature. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The second thing it represents is God's armor, which is His Word. And our new clothes Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18 amen folks so number one the fruit of the Spirit which is Jesus who is our new nature number two God's armor which is his word and our new clothes remember what did what in Romans 8 14 what did it tell us 
to put on Jesus. Amen, folks. When we put on Jesus, what are we putting on? We're putting on God's word. Amen, folks. In the beginning, there was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Amen, folks. When we clothe ourselves in Jesus, what are we doing? We're clothing ourselves in his word. Amen. Every time that we do his word, we're putting a piece of clothes on, on, on us. Amen, folks. It is God's word that we clothe ourselves in. It is Jesus who is our new nature. Amen, folks. What, what else have we been clothed in? What else have we been clothed in? We've been clothed in authority and we've been clothed in power. Amen, folks. We've been clothed in authority and clothed in power. Luke 10, 19 tells us this. Listen carefully. Man, the, 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 the scripture starts off, listen carefully. You know, don't just listen, but listen carefully. Yeah, you know, I could imagine Jesus over there saying, hey, you know what? You better listen and listen good. Listen carefully. Make sure you get this. Amen. Make sure you get this. This is Jesus letting us know. Make sure you get this. Amen, folks. He wants you to get this, folks. So listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan. And nothing will in any way harm you. Amen, folks. Jesus gave us authority over all the power of the enemy. Not just some of the not just some, but all the power over the enemy. Amen. We have the authority. Our authority is Jesus. Amen. Our authority comes from Jesus Himself. Amen, folks. Listen carefully. He says, listen carefully. You got to get this. You got to get this. You are not powerless over the enemy. You have all the authority over the enemy. He has nothing on you. Amen. He has nothing on you. You have all the, um, all the power over the enemy. Number two. Acts chapter one, verses eight. Equals our power that comes from the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people about me. Both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Amen, folks. So Jesus gave us authority. His Holy Spirit gives us power. We have authority from Jesus. We have power from the Holy Spirit. So we act on the authority of Jesus and we execute it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, folks. This is what we have now, that we have a new nature. Our new nature in Jesus, clothed in Him, gives us authority, gives us power. Amen. We act on Jesus' name, execute what we act by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, folks. Got to get this. You got to get this, folks, because the devil is a liar. He's going to want to take you. He's going to want to strip you down naked. He's going to want to put you back where, where you came from, where he had us. So it's important for us to know that the new nature that we have inside of us gives us authority, gives us power. The new clothes that we have, and we can walk in this authority. We can walk in this power. Amen. Why? Because it's the word of God. We're clothed in the word of God. The armor of God is the word of God. Amen, folks. We're clothed in his word. So we walk in his truth. And what does the truth do? It sets us free. And who the Son sets free is what? Truly free. John chapter 8, verses 32 and 36. Amen, folks. You got to take hold of this. This is what you are now. This is your new nature. This is the new clothes that you put on top, that you, that you clothe yourself in. You're clothed in Jesus now. Folks, so if you're clothed in Jesus, guess what? You can do whatever Jesus did and even greater things. John chapter 8. Was it John? No, John chapter 14, verses 12. John chapter 14, verses 12. Amen, folks? 
So we serve a mighty God. You got to get this down. That's why Jesus tells you, listen carefully. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. The devil is a liar, folks. He has nothing on you. <clears throat> now, what enables us to stay in our new nature and keep our new clothes on and keep fighting the good fight? What enables us to stay in our new nature and keep our new clothes on and keep fighting the good fight? Amen. Anybody got an answer to that? What enables us, folks? The Holy Spirit. Amen to that, Sister Thomas. But what, but what gets us the Holy Spirit? There we go. Glory be to God. Glory be to God, Sister Leanne. I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in Him I have shared the, His crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. It's our faith in Jesus that allows us to stay in our new nature and keep our new clothes on and keep fighting the good fight. Amen, folks. Without Jesus, there is no new nature, no new clothes, no authority, no power. Amen, folks? It's our faith in Jesus that keeps us in our new nature. It's our faith in Jesus that keeps our new clothes on. It's our faith in Jesus that we get authority and power. Amen, folks? None of this happens without our faith in Jesus. Amen, folks? None of this happens without faith. We don't take hold of salvation without faith. There is no authority to grab. There's no power to take. There's no new nature to get inside of us. There's no new clothes to put on. When we live this life now, we live this life in the in our faith in the Son of God. It is no longer us. It's Christ that lives inside of us. So it's no longer us trusting in ourselves or anybody else. But our faith is in Jesus. Amen, folks? None of this happens without Jesus. Everything comes back. Remember that revolving door? Everything comes back to Jesus, folks. Without Jesus, there is none of this. There is no authority. There is no power. There is no new nature. There is no new clothes. Amen, folks? And this is what Satan is trying to take away from us. Our faith. Because if he can take our faith away from us, our new nature and clothes are coming right off. Our new nature and clothes are coming right off. If Satan can take our faith away from us. There goes the new nature. There goes the new clothes that we just got. Amen, folks. This is what Satan is coming after. This is what he wants to kill. This is what he wants to steal. This is what he wants to destroy. Our faith. Amen, folks. Somebody say the devil is a liar. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 and 9 tells us this. Be sober, well balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. The enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack. Rooted, established, immovable, knowing the same experiences of of suffering are beings experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You don't suffer alone. James 4 7 tells us this. So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. As born again believers, with our new nature in Christ, clothed in Christ, we should never ever be afraid of the devil. Amen, folks. As a born again believer, which is me and you, who has a new nature, which is Christ, and now that we're clothed in Christ, amen, folks, we should never ever be afraid of the devil. 
Amen, folks. Why? Because we know the truth. And the truth sets us free. We know that the devil is a liar. We know that the devil is a deceiver. We know that the devil is an accuser. There is nothing that he can do to us that can harm us. Why? Because we have been given all the authority over the power of the enemy. Amen, folks. We shall not ever have no fear of the devil. He has been brought to naught. He is zero. He is nothing. Amen, folks. The only reason we gotta do the only reason why we deal with him is because he tries to he tries to trick us. He tries to lie to us. He tries to deceive us. Amen, folks. So we should never be afraid of him. We should be cautious. We should be cautious of him. Not afraid of him, but be cautious of him. That's why Peter tells us, stay alert. Be sober-minded. Be disciplined. Stay alert. Look out. Know when he's attacking you. Amen, folks? So again, let me read it again. As born-again believers with our new nature in Christ, clothed in Christ, we should never ever be afraid of the devil. We all have the authority over him, so we should never fear him. What we need to be when it comes to him is be cautious. He can't hurt us physically, so he'll try to attack us mentally through lies, deceptions, schemes, accusations, and trickery. This is what we need to be cautious of. Amen, folks? This is what we need to look out for. We're not afraid of the devil. We're looking out for all his all his wiles, right? In Ephesians chapter 6, stand up against all the wiles of the enemy. Amen. This is exactly what it is. All the trickery, all the buffoonery that he wants to bring against us. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 to 5 tells us this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen, folks. Satan is going to try and fill us with thoughts. With thoughts. Remember those fiery arrows in Ephesians? That's the thoughts that he tries to shoot at us. Those fiery arrows are thoughts. He shoots the thoughts. He tries to aim and he tries to hit us with, our, with thoughts. What do we do as born again believers? We take that thought and we don't entertain it. We take the authority over the thought that he tries to bring us. And we cast it down with the power that has been given to us. Amen, folks. We don't allow the thoughts to enter into our minds. Amen, folks. This is how he tries to get to us. Because he can't hurt us physically. So he'll bring us. He'll try to get us through our thoughts. Amen. And remember, people are not our enemies. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18 tells us this. People are not our enemies. We fight a, we fight a, we don't fight a flesh fight, we fight a spiritual fight. Amen, folks. People are not our enemies. So if when you so when people come against us, guess what? We don't hit them, we hit the spirit that's influencing them. Amen, folks. When they come against us, when they speak against us, guess what? That's a that's an arrow that's coming from Satan. That's an arrow that's coming from a demon. Do you know that each and every one of you got demons assigned to you? Because why? Satan, he wants to try and be like God, but he can't. God is everywhere. God is all around us. God is everywhere. Satan can't be everywhere. Satan cannot be everywhere. So what does he do? He assigns demons to us. He assigns demons to us. Amen, folks? So it's the demons that's influencing people around us. Amen. So when people come against us to try and ruffle our feathers, remember what we shared about acting and reacting? Amen. They're trying to get us to react instead of to act. Amen, folks. When we react, we're conforming. We're conforming to the world. When we act, we're conforming to God. Amen. We serve a mighty God. Ooh, we serve such a mighty God. So be encouraged, folks. Satan is going to try and hit you with accusations. He's going to try and make you think that you are not worthy 
to put those new clothes on. He's going to try and make you think that you are not worthy to receive the new nature that is in Christ. He's going to accuse you of what? He's going to accuse you of your past. He's going to accuse you of your sins. Amen. But guess what? We serve a mighty God that through the blood of Jesus, our sins have been forgiven and we have no past anymore. So when he tries to bring those arrows and shoots those thoughts at us, what do we do? We take the authority that Jesus gave us, capture the thoughts, bring it into the obedience of God, and we cast it down with the power given to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen, folks. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Amen, folks. So this is what we need to do. We don't entertain anything that will try to put itself above God. Amen, folks. We know the truth. The truth sets us free. Amen. Satan is going to come against us with thoughts to try and get us to react instead of to act. When he does, we're going to take the authority Jesus gave us over every thought he brings against us and cast it down with the power he gave us, being steadfast in our new nature, walking in our new clothes with our faith in Jesus. Amen, folks. Somebody say, I'm dressing up for Christ. God is good faith morning ministry. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this today. Remember, Satan will try to dis disclose us. He'll try to strip us down naked. He'll try to get us all of our new nature. But he is just a liar. He is a liar. Me and you, as born again believers, receive the new nature, which is Christ. And we're clothed in Christ, which is his word. Amen. We have all the authority over the power of the enemy. So when Satan comes... To try and take you back to that old place. When Satan comes to try and strip you down. Guess what? You shut him down. You shut him down. You put his neck under your foot. And you apply pressure. You apply pressure. Every time he tries to wiggle out. You apply that pressure on him. And you remind him where he's going. You remind him of how big our God is. And where he's going to go. Amen folks. We serve a mighty mighty God. God is good, Faith Morning Ministry. Ooh, Faith Morning Ministry, we serve such a mighty God. So I hope you guys were able to take something away from this today, Faith Morning Ministry. God is good. So if there's anything that you guys would like to share, by all means, please share. You know, let's fellowship a little bit. If I missed any questions, um, we can, you know, you guys can bring the questions back up. Now I'll be able to answer them. But God is good for morning ministry. Amen. We're dressing up for Christ. Amen. We're dressing up for Christ and we're keeping our clothes on. Amen, folks. We're keeping our new nature. Amen. Hey, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen to that, brother Renee. Full armor. Amen to that, sister, uh, sister Michelle. Hey, God bless you as well. So, love and appreciate you. You know, and and that's what it is, folks. You know, the devil he has been brought to naught. He has been brought to naught. And the thing of it is that, you know, many. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our brother Eric, Lord, and we just thank you, Father, Lord, that your favor be upon him. And we just thank you, Lord, that the check is on its way. We thank you, Lord, that his check is on its way. And it's you who shall supply all his needs according to His rich, according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, that the provision is being met, giving you glory and praises in the name of Jesus. Hey, you have a blessed... Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our brother Max. And we just thank you for traveling mercies as he travels out, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, that as he goes out and as he comes in, you are watching over him now and forever. Every assignment Satan will bring against him, we break it in the name of Jesus, giving you all glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Who we serve a mighty God. But like again, folks, the devil, he's a liar. He is a liar. 
And the thing of it is that many of our brothers and sisters don't know that they have the authority and power over him. So they end up being his punching bag. But guess what? That all stops now. That all stops today. Let your brothers and sisters know, you know, because some of them, they don't know because they're either not being taught it or they're not in the word. And that's why it's important for us to be in the word of God. Because when we're in the word of God, we know these things. We know the truth and it sets us free. We know that we have the authority over the devil and we know that we can tell him to go and he has to go. But many of our brothers and sisters, they don't know this truth. You know, and what does the word of God tells us? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. You know, so encourage your brothers and sisters. Let them know that they don't have to be attacked. Amen. Amen to that, Brother Dylan. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our sister's dog, Bruno, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to cover that bacterial infection. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes he is healed, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that every assignment Satan will bring against him, we break it now in Jesus' name, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your peace that passes all understanding to fill our sister as she fights the good fight of faith, Father, Lord. Giving you glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not that the Lord does evil in Isaiah 45, 7. It's not that the Lord does evil. The word evil means, there's, there's a whole bunch of meanings for the word evil. It means calamities, you know. It, it, it means um, wrath, you know. It's not that God is going to bring more evil. It's that God is going to punish those who continue to do evil. You know, you read the Christian, the one forming light and creating darkness, causing peace and creating disaster. I am the Lord who does all these things. So he's going to create disaster on those who keep continuing to do evil. You know? All those who, who are still, who are um, in disobedience. All those who are not doing his word. All those who are living that sinful life against him, guess what? They're going to get calamity on him. He's going to come. He's going to bring it to him. Amen? Yeah. You got to know the word, brother. You got to know the context of the word. He's going he's gonna to light people up who, keep, who continue to live in disobedience. That's what he's saying. He brings calamity. He brings wrath on the people who continue to not live according to him. He's going to, those who do evil is going to get evil done on them. Which is what? There's so much meaning in the word for the word evil. You know, just like how in the in the top part. He causes peace and creating disaster. What does that mean? He's going to bless those who do good. And he's going to create disaster for those who do bad. Well, this is God, not us. What if you're going to do evil, guess what? He's going to do it onto you. What you sow, you're going to reap. So whatever evil you want to sow, Ray Ray, guess what? You're going to reap it. Don't take God's word out of context.
Know the truth. God cannot be mocked. He knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. You're gonna reap evil, you're gonna sow evil. Guess what? You're gonna reap evil. You're gonna sow judgment, you're gonna reap judgment. You're gonna sow condemnation, you're gonna reap condemnation. Whatever you God is into the God is into reaping and sowing. If you guys you guys you guys already know this. If you read the word, he's into reaping and he's into sowing. Whatever you sow, you're gonna reap. So be cautious. See again, brother, you know what? I'm going to let you know this, brother, right now. Stop sowing discord in here. Stop trying to sow division in here right now. You know what you're doing, brother. And I, and I advise you right now in the name of Jesus, stop. Stop right now, brother. I, I don't need to read it. I don't need to read it because I know it. And that was in those days. And guess what? We're not in those days anymore. We're under grace. Don't just take a word of God, a scripture, and not its full context. Amen. That's what for that's what for those days. That was set up in those days. But glory be to God, Jesus Christ came and He 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 fulfilled those days for us. He fulfilled the law for us. Amen. God is good. So if we go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. It tells us this. But avoid foolish and ill-informed and stupid controversies and genealogies and dissensions and quarrels about the law. For they are unprofitable and useless. After a first and second warning, reject a divisive man who promotes heresy and causes dissension. Ban him from your fellowship and have nothing more to do with him. Well aware that such a person is twisted and is sinning. He is convicted and self-condemned and is gratified by causing confusion among believers. You've been warned, brother. I'm asking you nicely to stop. You know, folks, I can't, I can't, I can't say why God did the way, why God did what He did back in those days. But that's where back in those days, God set it up that way in those days, right? Because there was no Savior, Jesus wasn't here with us, Amen. But glory be to God, those days are no longer, Amen. Glory be to God. Now we have grace, we have Jesus who fulfilled the law for us, and because He fulfilled the law for us. We can, we fulfill the law because he keeps it for us. Amen, folks. Those were for those days. God is good. Hey, brother, God is good. Amen. But glory be to God, we have Jesus. Amen, folks. And like I said, you know. There'll be no, amen, yeah, right? Without Jesus, we're still a mess, you know? And glad, glory be to God, Jesus straightens us out. And that's the thing of those days, guess what? All those sacrifices they made, 
they made, it, it wasn't enough. All the sacrifices that was made in those days could only cover, it could never take away what Jesus had, what Jesus has. It could never do what the blood of Jesus has. All those blood from all those animals could only cover. It was just a foreshadow of Jesus. When Jesus came, his blood sealed the deal for us. His blood took away sin. His blood washed us clean. Amen. The blood of the animals couldn't do that. That's why we needed the perfect sacrifice. That's why God himself gave up his only begotten son so that all of us will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen to that, Brother Tyrone. serve a mighty God folks so be encouraged be encouraged God loves each and every one of you he does not want to see not one of you destroyed but he does want to see all of you have everlasting life he does want to see all of you make heaven your home and you can do this by simply repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior it is by believing in Jesus that you will make yourselves right with God and it's by confessing your faith that makes you saved so if there's anyone here who would like to receive salvation and make heaven your home, type in the comments I do. I would like to pray and make that good confession with each and every one of you. Today is the day of salvation, folks. God did not come to judge you. He is here to save you. He wants all of you saved. He does not want to see any of you destroyed. But all of you have everlasting life, folks. You have the opportunity to make heaven your home today. By simply repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hey, no problem, brother. But if you ever have a change of heart, just know this. God loves you. You may not want it now. But if you ever have a change of heart later, God will, God will welcome you into his family by simply repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he loves you. God is good. So be encouraged, folks. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can make heaven your home. By simply repenting of your sins and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is by believing in Jesus you make yourself right with God. It's by confessing your faith that makes you saved. So if there's any of you here who wants to receive salvation, type in the comments, I do. I would like to pray and make that good confession with you, folks. Because you're not going to be able to receive it. You're not going to be able to receive salvation when you're standing in that judgment line, folks. When it comes down to that final day and everyone is being judged, you will not be able to receive salvation, folks. You will end up in that lake of fire because you chose to reject the truth of Jesus Christ. Because you chose not to believe. We serve a mighty God. Know this, brother. God loves you. And if you ever have a change of heart, He will accept you into His family. All you need to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Brother, what advice would you give your teenage self to receive? I would, I would have given myself to believe in Christ. Brother Luis, I see you. God is good. Let's make this good confession together. Father Lord, I come before you a sinner and I repent of all of my sins. I invite your son Jesus Christ into my heart and I do declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died for my sins and you raised him from the dead and right now I receive his forgiveness and I thank him that I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. God is good.
Welcome to the family of Christ, brother. Your name has been registered in heaven. Every angel rejoicing over your salvation as we speak. God is good. Brother Pablo, were you able to make the good confession? If not, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you again. Hey, good morning, Brother Jasper. God is good. Blessed to see you, Brother Jasper. Children of God, this is what we are. We're children of God. God is good. We serve an awesome God. Amen, family. For all of you who do not know, guess what? Tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sister Tambis has praise and worship going on and the reading of the word. So if you have an opportunity, swing by her channel. Get blessed. God is good. And should you miss it, you can you can watch it on YouTube. God is good. And just like just like here, just the sharing of the word. If you guys miss it here, you can go to Faith Morning Ministry YouTube and watch it over there. God is good. Hey, don't worry about being MIA, Brother Jasper. The main thing, all is well. The main thing that all is well, Brother Jasper. No, I think I think it's you. It's God. In fact, I don't think I know. It's God pulling you to Him. You know, just know this, brother, that you know. God loves you. God loves you, and He gave up His only begotten Son for you, so that if all who shall believe in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. So know this, brother, that if you if you want to receive salvation and you want to make heaven your home all you need to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you will be saved and you know that the church the building that we go to is just a place for us to worship praise God come into fellowship with each other the true church the true church is us the true church is me and you for those who belong to Christ. We're the true church. Amen. The building is just a place for us to honor God. To praise and worship Him. You know. But we honor God and worship Him in truth and spirit. So we can worship God even out of the church. We can worship God everywhere we go. But the church, the building itself is for us to gather as the brethren. Come together in fellowship. Reading His word. Praising and worshiping together. Amen. But the true church is me and you. I don't know. What question did you ask? I don't I don't mute nobody. But if you get muted, it's because you might have been disrespectful. You're going to heaven. Yep, we're all those who belong to Christ is going to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our brother Jasper, Father Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to cover our brother Jasper and his wife, Father Lord, and his family. We thank you, Lord, that whatever concerns him, you are perfecting it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your peace that passes all understanding to fill brother Jasper's heart and mind. And every assignment Satan will bring against him, we break it now in the name of Jesus, giving you all the glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. We serve a mighty God. The true church is in existence. Each and every one of us who belong to Christ is the true church. Amen to that, Brother Luis. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our Brother Luis, Father Lord. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus to cover him, Lord. We thank you for renewing of strength and health. 
physically, mentally, and spiritually, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that his diabetes is leaving him in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that by your stripes he is healed, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, that as he stays faithful to you, Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, that he will no longer need that dialysis, that he will be able to come off of it, Father Lord, by your healing, Lord. Every assignment Satan will bring against him, we break it down in the name of Jesus, giving you all the glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. We serve our mighty God, folks. We speak life. We speak life. Amen, folks. We speak life to our circumstances. We speak life to what we're what we're in. Amen. And we be thankful for it. You know, we don't we be thankful in the circumstance. We're not thankful for the circumstance. We're thankful in the circumstance because we know that our God is going to bring us out of that circumstance. Amen, folks. So be encouraged, folks. God is with you. No matter what it's looking like, God is with you. Whatever it is that you're going through, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. It's gonna. It's only temporary. Amen. But God, He lasts forever. He lasts forever. And what you suffer now, you're going you're gonna to partake in glory. You're going to enjoy in glory. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God, folks. But God is good faith morning ministry. We are about to close out for the for the day. So if there is anyone here with any um prayer requests, you know, before we close out, you know, can you can put them in the chat? God is good. Remember. You have a new nature. You have new clothes on. Your new nature is Christ. You're clothed in Christ. Amen. You have all the authority and power over the enemy. Don't let him try and take your new clothes from you. Don't let him try and steal your kicks from you. Amen, folks. You let him know where he got to go. You let him know where he got to go. Well, guess what? Your bad week can start turning around from today. You're a bad week can turn around today, Steve. All you got to do is speak life over it. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever our brother Steve is going through this week, Lord, whatever concerns him, we thank you, Lord, that you are perfecting it. We thank you, Lord, for a renewing of strength, physically, mentally, spiritually, as well as health, physically, mentally, spiritually. We thank you, Father Lord, that any assignment Satan is bringing against him, we break it all in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God of possible and not impossible. So whatever it is that he is going through, Lord, we thank you. He is coming out of it, giving you glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our brother Sean, Father Lord. And we just thank you, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your goodness that follows him all the days of his life. We thank you, Lord, that any assignment Satan will bring against him, we break it now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to cover Brother Sean and his family, Lord, your hedge of protection to surround him, and your abundance of favor to follow him in all that he does, Father, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for renewing of his mind, of who he is in you and what you have done for him, Lord, giving you glory and praises in Jesus' name. Amen, Sister Leanne. You have yourself a blessed day as well. So. We're going to close out Fate Morning Ministry. Amen. God is good. So as we close out, before we close out, if there's anyone here who wants to receive salvation, make heaven your home. I like to pray and make a good confession with you. The most important thing is that you believe what you're confessing. Amen. So whoever wants to receive salvation, let's go and let's go and make this good confession together. Heavenly Father, I come before you a sinner and I repent of all of my sins. I invite your son, Jesus Christ, into my heart, and I do declare that Jesus is Lord. 
I believe that he died for my sins and you raised him from the dead. And right now I receive his forgiveness and I thank him that I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. God is good. For all of you who said that prayer and truly believed what you said, welcome to the family of Christ. Each and every one of you made heaven your home. Your names have been registered in the Lamb's book of life. God is good. So now I'll close us all in prayer for morning ministry. Love you too, Brother Billy. Father Lord, I thank you, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus for this time of fellowship. I thank you, Lord, that you were here with us confirming your word through the accompanying signs, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the 12 new souls that made heaven their home today. Not because of what we said, not because of what we've done, but because of your word that sets them free. Because of your truth, Father Lord. Not because of us, but because of you. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the praises in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that every prayer has been heard today and answered in the name of Jesus, Father Lord. As we go our separate ways, Father Lord, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers each and every one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you, Father Lord, that uh, as they go throughout the day, that they are guarded by you, Father Lord, that they are walking in their new nature. They are walking in their new clothes, Father Lord. And every assignment that Satan brings against them, it is broken in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your favor to be upon them, Father Lord, in everything that they do. Your hedge of protection to surround them, Lord, giving you all the glory and praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Who we serve such a mighty God. We serve such a Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our brother, Father Lord. We lift up his family who's looking for a home, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your favor to be upon this, Lord. We thank you, Father Lord, that any assignment Satan will bring against them through fear, through doubt, through worry, through anxiety, that this will not happen. We break it in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father Lord, that it is you who will supply their needs, Father Lord. Giving you glory and praise is in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, you guys have a blessed day, faith morning ministry. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, walk in your new nature. Walk in your new clothes. The devil is a liar. You have all the authority and power over him. Over him. Amen, folks? God is good. We will see you, God's will, on Monday. Have a blessed weekend, Faith Morning Ministry. Love and appreciate each and every one of you.